Many good plays are about people going on journeys, either physical journeys or metaphorical journeys. And the book of Acts is full of journeys. As this message of Jesus spills out from Jerusalem and goes international. Chapter 13 brings us to the first of Paul's missionary journeys. Paul, who has changed his name from Saul and Barnabas, are commissioned by their home church in Antioch and they head off, led by the Holy Spirit, towards Cyprus. They had a certain rhythm on these missionary journeys. They'd always go to the Jewish people first. They'd arrive at the synagogue, and they would share about who Jesus was and about what he had done. They'd always start with their own people first. But often, their message would be rejected. Then they would go to the non-Jews with this same message. I find it fascinating on these journeys as to who they end up speaking with. Different opportunities arise. They speak to vast crowds and to individuals. They speak to the well-to-do and the very ordinary people. They speak to devout Jews and to false prophets. A whole mixture of people become their audience. In this chapter, News about Paul and Barnabas must have spread because they are summoned to come and see the proconsul to share their message with him. But as they get there, there is a false prophet who does not want the proconsul to come to faith. Paul looks at him intently. Spiritually, he sees what's going on in this man's life, the deceit, the evil. And miraculously, this false prophet, this sorcerer, is blinded. As this happens, the Roman governor comes to faith. In the next scene, they're in Turkey and they arrive in a synagogue. They hear the reading from the law and the prophets. Then they're invited to speak, to share something. This was quite common for traveling Jews to be invited to share when they were in the synagogue. Paul begins to share the history of the Jewish people, about the different kings, leading up to Jesus. The people are fascinated. The following week, the entire city turns out to hear what Paul has to say. And Paul begins to speak about a new age breaking in, about everything being reconciled back to God. His message receives a different reaction. The Jewish people get very angry and upset. They try and cause a riot and persecution. But at the same time, many non-Jews come to faith. They experience the Holy Spirit and they are overwhelmed with joy. Whether they are with vast crowds or individuals, whether they are with well-to-do people or the very ordinary, whether they are with very zealous Jews or false prophets, Paul and Barnabas take the opportunities before them, the opportunities to share. No matter who their audience is, they have a boldness. On the journey of life, what are the opportunities that we have today? Who is our audience? And will we have the boldness to share like Paul and Barnabas about the life-changing message of Jesus?